resumed. Again, you are permitted by court order from recorded these proceedings pursuant to section 136 of the Courts of Justice Act. All right. Um, I'm working off the most recent version of the draft that was uh, provided to me by the court office. And um, uh, who wishes to uh, lead off? Is it uh, Mr. Honor? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. The Democracy Fund has two brief submissions on this order, which yes. largely deal with interpretation. Um, so if we look at the, um, um, the first suggestion is that um, seven, uh, 7B, uh, the last clause there says, upon the person agreeing to abide by this order. Now, we think that creates a bit of confusion because what Mr. Wills said today, and I think he was dead on, was that you're bound to obey an order where your actions fall within the scope of an order, even if you're not bound by the order. So the, our, what, what we're saying is that if, if we have this order in which people have to sign, it might create some confusion and it doesn't actually add anything to the police's powers and it doesn't actually take anything away. So our submission is that we should eliminate that clause in section 7B and the same clause that exists in section eight. So just to put that more succinctly, it seems it makes it look like you you have to sign it to be bound and we think that's confusing. I'm just reading it for my own purposes. Thank you, yeah. And you made a comment about uh, persons having to sign something? Yes, if you look at the last clause of uh, Section 7B, um, it says, uh, you know, the, the police retain the discretion to... Uh, would you leave the court, Your Honor? I believe my friend may have a slightly older version. I think we, yeah. just, we recently emailed the current version, but... Uh, the, the language is in, in writing is not in 7B at, at the current version. The current version that I have reads as follows in 7B. This court orders that the police shall retain discretion to detain and release any person without arrest who the police have reasonable and probable grounds to believe is contravening or has contravened any provisions of this order upon that person agreeing to abide by this order. So I don't see that there's any written document that's required at this point. Your Honor, then there must be some, for some reason I must still have the wrong order. In that case, what I'll do is I'll defer to my, I'll, I'll stop my submissions now. I'll let my, my friends make their submissions. And I'll... Yeah, then that's that same language. Of, there's nothing in aid that requires a signed document. I can advise the court paragraph eight um, does have an in writing um, to obey this order. But sorry, that, yeah, sorry, sorry, correct. my oversight there. So eight, eight reads this court orders that any peace officer and any member of the police who arrests or arrests and removes any person pursuant to this order shall have authorization to release that person from arrest upon that person agreeing in writing to obey this order. So what I see there is eight goes, it's a step further than seven. It is a person who has already been arrested. Do I have that correct, Mr. Wills? Yes, you do, Your Honor. And that was the subject of our discussion among the joint plaintiffs. All right. So um, I gather, Mr. Hunter, you said that there were others who wanted to make some comments or submissions. The other submission I would, well, the other submission I would like to make, Your Honor, would go to um, paragraph nine. And I, I hope I'm looking at the right order right now. And what this order says is that this court orders that 
provided that the terms of this order and any applicable law are complied with, the defendants and other persons remain at liberty um, to engage in peaceful, lawful, and safe protest that does not block access to the investor bridge um, and approaching roadways, if I'm reading it correctly. Um, I, th I think that the issue with this one is also interpretational. Um, to me, a literal reading of this suggests that if one person breaches the order or any applicable law, then the defendants no longer remain at liberty to engage in peaceful, lawful, and safe protest. You know, even if those particular defendants are in fact uh, obeying the law and are not in breach of the order. And what I would suggest instead of this reading is that we just keep it simple and and, and we say something along the lines of this court orders that the defendants and other persons remain at liberty to engage in a peaceful, lawful, and safe protest. Well, that certainly narrows it from your standpoint, but um, I'll hear from Mr. Wills and others. Um, my concern is that, uh, you know, I want an order that is clear. I want an order that is going to be respected. And I don't want any wiggle room for parties to engage in an interpretation that then allows them to evade the purpose of the order. The purpose of the order is quite clear. Your Honor, I think I think you're you're right that the um, the order has to be very clear to people. But I think the current wording because a literal interpretation of it is saying something that you don't actually intend. You do not intend for everyone to lose their rights if one person breaches the order. And I think that's what it says. And I think that is, that is going to create confusion amongst some people. And uh, there's, it's more important to get the order right, to get your intention down on there, than it is to have something that uh, is really just deterring people. I'm just reading it again. Wills, do you have any comment or Ms. King or Mr. Hunter? Uh, Your Honor, I thought it was, I thought it was compelling and I, but I think it, I think read as a whole, it, it doesn't, it doesn't create the mischief my friend is concerned about and I share his concern. Um, it, it's with respect to the defendants and persons remaining at liberty to engage in peaceful protest that does not impede or block. Any defendant or person that is engaged in peaceful process that, that does not impede or block does not offend paragraph nine of this order. Uh, I think it can stay as, as it stands. And, and certainly I don't think anyone from the AG or, or the plaintiff's camp or perhaps Stephanie Winter is going to say um, uh, freedom of expression rights are lost because one person threw up a tent. Um, and I don't think it says that. Defendants and other persons that are engaged in the peaceful protest that does not impede or block are free to do so. Maybe we should just say that then. It, it, I, I submit it does say that. Uh, if there was anything, you might pull a comma out, but I think it, it might be nitpicking out of that. Well, Your Honor, I'm not, I'm not going to repeat my submission. I think it does literally say a certain thing. I think Mr. Wills is, is wrong about this point, but you have my submission. Right, thank you. Um, anything further? Okay, Your Honor. Mr. Kitchen, I think, is next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, two brief things. I'm going to speak first to paragraph uh, nine, but different than um, my friend just did. Um, liberty uh, to engage in a peaceful, lawful, and safe protest that does not impede. Um, the only concern that I have is with safe. Um, that's hopelessly subjective, and I would say unhelpful, because peaceful and lawful are, are 
what's relevant and um, deal with the issue. If we have safe in there, then we have um, a subjective ground upon which somebody can say something's unsafe, especially in the, in the context of, of public health restrictions that sometimes um, impact the ability to the protest in certain numbers, the protest in certain distance from each other. Um, so I don't, I think safe needs, needs to come out because it can only create mischief and isn't adding any value. I can't agree. Um, safe in the context where we have individuals and motor vehicles, um, we're going to leave safe in there. I, I would submit that's going to be problems if we have uh, protesters on sidewalks, um, which is to be expected. And, and um, of course, that's constitutionally protected. So that, that's why I raised that point, is I, I, I see mischief with, with protesters on sidewalks and, and police using this order to I want, to, I want to ensure the safety of people. Safe stays in. Anything further? Yes, paragraph four. Um, and this, this goes to a similar concern. Um, I think it would be helpful to add in a sentence that said uh, this. For greater clarity, this order does not extend to the sidewalks or otherwise beyond the surface of the roadway used by vehicles. No, I'm not going to get into that type of uh, language. I think it's very clear. Well, I, I, I submit that there needs to be some more clarity to protect um, 2B and 2C, which is going to continue to, to be uh, relevant. I, 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 I expect, because I don't, I don't imagine protesters are just going to completely give up and completely leave the area. There's going to continue to be something. I and expect I think, I people, I expect that people will respect this order. Thank you. I'm trying to help make the order um, respect the Constitution, which may help the people to respect the order. Anything further? My submissions. Thank you. Your Honor, just uh, in the preamble of the order upon reading, I, it references the number of affidavits that were considered. would like to insert uh, in the affidavit of Dr. Clifford Rosen, sworn February 11, 2022. Is that the one that uh, you were uploading at the time? Yes, yes, yeah. Your Honor, and it has, in fact, the sworn version has been uploaded to case lines. Yes, that should be inserted. Your Honor, uh, Mr. Wills, will I be um, making the amendments? And, of course, I will make that insertion as may be required. Yes, and I would like you, uh, when we've concluded here, Mr. Wills, to have one last discussion with Mr. Honor to see if you can resolve the issue of the comment in paragraph uh, nine. Yes, Your Honor. I'd be pleased. To and then, um, if you would be so helpful for me, if you could send that to the court office as soon as possible in a word format, that will allow me to get a signature on it and get the the order issued and entered for uh, the purposes for today. Yes, Your Honor. We'll move with haste when uh, we are concluded. And then. Um, Because I have not signed an order, I will have the following um, endorsement for the record. Your, Your Honor, if I may, I, I have a couple more submissions. Sorry. We, on, yep. That's okay. So, so the first one was just inserting that affidavit. Uh, the second, Your Honor, I understand that you want to make an order that's clear and concise and that your intentions are clearly articulated in the same. I imagine and correct me if I'm wrong, Your Honor, that, that such an order would involve proportionality and, and minimal impairment. And to the extent that this order is about blocking the flow of goods coming north and south through that border, uh, I would submit to this court that uh, for paragraph four, that the, that the term, the notice that this order are hereby restrained and enjoined from blocking the vehicular access to the Ambassador Bridge on the north and southbound lanes of Huron Church Road. The purpose is to allow the goods to travel through the border. And, uh, Your Honor, I, I don't think submissions were heard about the, the whole surrounding area. Again, I, I think for clarity, it says that bridge goods must... For clarity, them. sir, I want to ensure that the traffic flows. Okay? It's very clear. I hear you, but I disagree. Okay, Your Honor, and... Um, Further submissions here in terms of the, the, the flow of the traffic. 
again, I, I trust that the court is most concerned about the blocking of the traffic. That is, blocking is the office, opposite of, of, I suppose, free flow of traffic. You'll know, I think we can take judicial notice of the fact that there are many things that may briefly impede traffic. Things as basic as weather conditions or constructions may render and there's there's uh, another thing traffic. at play there's another thing at play here which is common sense okay obviously if you have a closure as a result of a storm or an ice storm common sense is going to prevail the windsor police or whoever else you called upon to enforce this order have some discretion and will act with some common sense here the i'm not going to get into the semantics of whether what's impeding or blocking it can either be vehicles it could be people it could be some other obstacle that is put into place i am drawing this line that the intention of this order is to ensure that there is a flow of traffic okay Your Honor, and one final submission here is with respect to the, the, the intent obviously it's a busy roadway there may be many people that attempt to cross the open roadway but if, if there was some other like let's say for example a court uh, a, a truck defies this court order and and blocks blocks the traffic subsequently every other vehicle on that road may be subjectively seen as impeding this traffic is it your is it your intention your honor not even going to comment not even going to comment if you have that type of a situation the police or whoever else is trying to enforce the order will act with common sense you know if we, if we try to get into defining each and every issue that could potentially arise in the next 10 days will still be here in 10 days time so that is it for the order Mr. Wills and Mr. Honor will try to deal with the comma. The following endorsement is to be placed on the record and it will be in written form and distributed shortly. It reads as follows. I am satisfied that the test for an interim interlocutory injunction has been met such that an injunction is granted effective February 11, 2022 at 7 p.m pursuant to section 101 of the courts of justice act rule 40.01 of the rules of civil procedure and section 440 of the municipal act 2001 the order to give effect to the foregoing is being prepared for my review and signature detailed reasons will follow it's been a very long day it has been sorry that's the end of the endorsement these are just my comments. It's been a very long day. My thanks to the court staff who have stayed uh, well past the usual court time. 